What's happening, people? The Poets here. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. The stick wants to be known. So, what's going on today is we're talking about EK Fluid Works. Now, you know the company EKWV, the water cooling company that I've been partnering with a lot lately. This right here is the EK Fluid Gaming Machine. So, it has a 5950X, uh, 64 gigs of RAM, RTX 3090. It's a beast, like full EK aluminum water cooling hardware. Over here, we have all copper EK stuff here in deep blue. Dual system build, so a Threadripper 3970X up top and a 10900K down below, both with 3090s and EK pump and EK radiators and all that stuff. So I'm very, very familiar with EK water cooling hardware. EK also not only has the gaming line and obviously the, the water cooling hardware line, but they have a division called EK Fluid Works that many people are not familiar with. I got to spend time with them and the facility is actually ran by a company called Xenowolf here in Burbank, California. Amazing people, I got to spend time with them numerous times because they're like 10 minutes away. And they allowed me the opportunity to review their S5000. It's an $18,000 workstation based PC basically uh, with a Threadripper 3990X. So that's 64 cores, 128 threads. Actually, I don't even want to spoil everything for you because it's a beast of machine. But first, let me show you some things about Xenowolf. Good people over there, <laughs> amazing facilities. Okay, so welcome to the workstation area at my place. And this is where I can just kind of focus, get things done. You'll notice it's kind of like a blackout theme, no RGB or anything like that. Just focus, get it done and get out. And that's what this machine allows me to do. It is the EK Fluid Works S5000 and it is a beast. Yes, this is an $18,000 machine. Just when you go to the website, you can kind of select all the components that you want. And when you do it for this, it comes up as like $17,995.97 or something like that off the top of my head. But let's, uh, let's get into it. First off, this is actually a case custom made by Lee and Lee. So a company that many of us are very, very familiar with. And it's not going to be like see-through, like a gaming case or anything like that, because pretty much once you put this together, it's like set it and forget it because of the quality hardware that's actually in this. So let me open it up for you so you can see. So this, to be honest, is not the easiest thing to take apart, but in a way it kind of is because it's just kind of snap on and snap off. And there's like multiple snapping parts. So yes, this is a beast of a system. Let's get into it. This is the Threadripper 3990X right here. 64 cores, 128 threads. It's a bad boy of a processor. It does cost about $5,000 roughly, so you wouldn't buy that processor for gaming, but it can game, I'll show you later. And right here we have the RAM. So you'll notice there's four sticks of RAM here. That's 128 gigabytes. And because it's quad channel memory, you're getting that extra boost in performance in terms of certain applications, right? Now there are open spots here, so you can also upgrade the RAM very nice and easily. Then when it comes to this, these right here are the GPUs. Yes, they're not big, huge things because they're on water blocks by EK. And Xenowolf has done a really nice job making sure that you can easily upgrade these GPUs in terms of the number of GPUs that you may want in a system like this. So these are quick disconnects right here that they're connected to. 
So it's very easy to add or remove a GPU. You'll notice there's four spots here. This system in particular can easily house three GPUs because it has a 1600 watt 80 plus platinum power supply unit. But if you wanna kick it up a notch and get four, five, six, seven GPUs, that's an option with Xenowolf, which is crazy. These quick disconnects are so nice. They're drip free. So when you are taking them off and putting them back on, you don't have to worry about any weird leaks or anything. And then to cool all of this, oh, these are 480 millimeter radiators. There's one here and one here. And with the Vardar fans, they are powerful. They are pretty darn quiet as well. I didn't even have to adjust the fan curves on this thing because they preset everything and mwah, it was flawless. Right here and here we have two D5 pumps by EKWB and these are actually running in parallel. So they're connected right here and right here. And that gives us two main benefits. The first, and this is the one I really appreciate is because of all these potential restrictions. So we have two radiators, as you can see here, we have the GPUs, CPU water block. We have uh, all of these quick disconnects. So there's a lot of potential areas here that will reduce the flow rate of the fluid right here. And we wanna make sure that that fluid is always flowing at a nice optimal pace. So having two pumps ensures that. Additionally, if one pump happens to fail, the other one is already in parallel connected to it. So it just continuously pushes fluid through this until we actually have time to remove this pump and replace it with another one or just fix that one, obviously. The quick disconnects that you see right here are very efficient. I love the layout of them. So not only do they look really nice, they also are right in line with where you would need to place the GPU. So it's well thought out as well. Xenowolf is always looking for ways to improve upon their connections as well. So you'll see this connection right here. It's a direct connection from the junction going 90 degrees into the tubing right here. So that's reducing a potential point of failure as opposed to what you see here is a 90 degree fitting, which screws into the reservoir and then goes into the tube to continue on with the loop. So it's reducing that point of potential failure, which is what everybody loves when it comes to water cooling. Now this is what 64 cores, 128 threads looks like. It's pretty crazy to see that in Task Manager. So with all of these cores and threads, let's run a favorite Cinebench R23 multi-core. And this is pretty bonkers when you see it because this thing just takes off. Look at all those cores and threads. And then seeing all these active is straight bonkers. Simple as that. And gave us a score of 62,571. Wow. And after that run, all those 64 cores maxed out at 63 degrees Celsius. How crazy is that? But that was just a single pass test with Cinebench R23. So let's run a 10 minute, you know, full soak and see what it does. So I have the Cinebench R23 test duration set to 10 minutes and start. And we're gonna go ahead and reset Hardware Info 64. And we'll come back after this commercial break. Well, I don't have any commercials. Who wants to sponsor me? So the CPU TDI maxed out at 74.9 degrees Celsius. At 64 cores, that's an amazing temperature for that many cores in that little tiny space. And then of course right here, the CPU package power, 280 watts, absolutely bonkers. And for those that are not familiar with wattage and CPUs, basically 280 watts to run 64 cores is really, really impressive. So I know with all of this information, you guys are all just wondering, can this thing game? You know, yes, I understand. Gaming is like number one in many people's thoughts. For a machine like this, you wouldn't buy this for gaming. The CPU alone costs like $5,000. That's for the Threadripper 3990X, the last time I, I checked. So yeah, you don't buy Threadrippers for gaming. You buy them for video editing, 3D modeling, you know, deep level learning machines, all that type of stuff. But in your downtime, when you are done with your work, can you use this machine to then game? The answer is a resounding yes. So this is Star Citizen, my favorite game of the hour, probably my favorite game in the last 10 years, uh, to be honest. And it is entirely demanding. One of the most, if not the most demanding game out there. Now, it's not quite out there because it's an alpha. That's one reason why it's demanding. So if you're thinking of Rust and Fortnite and all kinds of other games, 
Um, yeah, no, this, this takes the cake in terms of system resources. So you need a high end, basically, in order to run Star Citizen as the, at its best potential, just take your money, all of it, and just like throw it at your PC and, and then hope that that's enough. That's, that's what Enterprise says. So follow Enterprise on Twitch. Smooth, smooth as butter. Mwah. Who says Threadrippers can't game? <laughs> now, one of the main benchmarks I always like to run on a system is Blender Benchmark because it's pretty consistent across the board for all of my systems to give me a, a guideline for which system is more powerful for multi-threaded stuff and which one is more powerful for GPU, like workstation tasks. And so when you go into Blender, you can actually select, do I want to run this on the CPU? Do I want to run this on the GPU? Here you get to select exactly what you want to run. So we're just going to run the Threadripper 3990X, 64 cores, start benchmark, and this takes a few minutes to run. So Blender benchmark is running right now. It goes through a couple of different scenarios. This one is called Classroom, and you'll see all 128 threads are being hammered right now, which is pretty cool to see. And the max temperature so far has been 64 degrees Celsius right there on the T-Die. And while we're running Blender benchmark, this system is pretty darn quiet. Okay, so Blender Benchmark is all done. We have some of the results here. I'll go ahead and submit them in a second. The temperature maxed out at 71.3 degrees. That's absolutely spectacular for 64 cores. So all you do is hit Submit Results. It brings it online and it'll actually show you how it's ranked against other similar systems. So we've submitted the Blender Benchmark data online and this is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3990X 64 core processor and it did this in the top nine percentile of its category, very nice. Overall, it ran everything in eight minutes and 40 seconds, which is highly impressive for this 64 core processor. A nice benefit of having a water-cooled system is it will actually save you a little bit on electricity as well, because these components are a lot cooler than if they were air-cooled. When you have an air-cooled system, it does actually require more electricity to get those same benchmark numbers, that same gaming performance, uh, compared to this type of system that's all completely water-cooled. And because those temperatures are a lot lower, it actually uses less electricity, which is really nice. Additionally, the sound levels are spectacular with this thing. So whether I'm playing Star Citizen, again, you wouldn't buy a system like this for gaming, but it can game perfectly fine. The noise levels were very, very low. Same thing with Blender Benchmark, extremely low noise levels. Uh, Cinebench R23, very, very low noise levels. Now, when I do build my own water cool systems, I do like to match the fan curves to the fluid temperatures. That's my personal preference. I believe this system is set up to match the temperatures based on the, the CPU temperatures, which is perfectly fine as well, uh, but that's just my personal preference. So that's something I think they should add or think about in the future as well. Other than that, this is a spectacular system and let's take a look at the cable management in the back. The power supply for this thing is substantial. Plus look at this cord. That's, it's like just staring at me. Isn't that awesome? This ASRock motherboard, it's a TRX40 motherboard for this Red Ripper 3990X, and it has pretty much all the I.O. you'll ever want, plus these dual Ethernet ports, five gigs each. Very nice. This system by Xenowolf has some spectacular cable management. Keep in mind, we have two 480 millimeter radiators with four fans each, and all of these cables are so neat and clean, it's really impressive. Very clean through the middle, plenty of room for upgradability. We also have the plate here for additional storage and it's all being powered by this 1600 watt 80 plus platinum EVGA power supply unit that's obviously fully modular with lots of space for even more future upgradability of cable management. Very well done. So that's about it. Thank you very much to EK Fluid Works and Xenowolf for putting this together and allowing me to use this review unit for months. It's been a pleasure uh, gaming on it, yes. Uh, pleasure video editing on it. I mean, it, everything I've thrown at it, it's been amazing. And yes, it does run Minesweeper, the small map at one FPS. So it meets my criteria for, is this a badass system? So overall, thank you very much, everybody. Like and subscribe. Videos like this do take a while for me to really get to know the system and all that stuff. And I've been doing a ton of TikToks on this as well. So shout out to all the TikTok crew. So 
like and subscribe, all the things. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.